Okay, so we have two equations, and they look kind of similar, right? Uh, we have this equation here and this equation here. They have the same variable, x, and the same number uh, numbers, 2 and 7, but of course the arrangement is a little bit different. But my question to you is, what's the difference? What's the difference between these two equations? There's actually a big difference between these two equations, and uh, not only uh, do they have different names, how we solve them is going to be uh, quite different as well. So if you know the difference uh, between these two equations, go to put that in the comments section. You know, better yet, if you know how to solve, put your uh, solve these equations, put your answer, your solutions for these equations in there as well. But I'm going to go over specifically what type of equation this is, what type of an equation this is, and how to solve each of these. Because when you're looking at equations in algebra, you have to recognize, uh, you know, you can't solve something unless you, you know, recognize what type of equation it is. And, you know, equations like this, they look similar. But you can have equations that look kind of similar to one another, but they could be completely different, and that's the case here. So I'm going to get into the, uh, precisely what to do with these two equations in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But um, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you pass your course. If you're taking an exam and it has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace, or CLEP exam, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam, I can go on and on and on, but you get the idea. There's a ton of exams out there that people have to take for all sorts of reasons, and there's this pesky math section on it that you have to get through to pass the exam. I can help you out with that. If you homeschool, I have a very uh, comprehensive uh homeschool math program and curriculum you might be interested in. And if you need some math notes, don't panic. You can use my math notes. I'm going to leave uh, just uh, links to uh, my math notes in the description of this video. But hopefully you don't need my math notes because I've been teaching math for decades. The real key to success, at least what I've seen, is note taking. Okay, The better your notes are, I mean, I'm talking about having great math notes, the better off you're going to be in math. So you can thank me later when you improve your notes, you'll be like, oh, that guy was right, okay? My notes are better and my grades are better. But let's get into uh, these two equations. Again, if you know what type of equation this is and what type of equation this is, go ahead and put that in the comments section because I'm going to tell you the answer right now. Okay, so let's go down here and just define what type of equations we're dealing with. So this first one, x squared, okay, is equal to 7. This is a quadratic equation, okay? Now, why it's a quadratic equation? Well, effectively, this little x is what we call a polynomial. It's a real basic polynomial, but it's a degree two polynomial. It's a degree two polynomial, and by definition, that means it's a quadratic equation. So the variable um, x is in the base, okay, where the base is at, whereas this one, it, the, the x is in a different position. So I'll talk about this in a second. But what do we know about uh, quadratic equations? Well, when you have a polynomial to whatever degree it is, in this case, uh, quadratic equations are degree two, this means that this has two solutions, okay? So quadratic equations always have two solutions. So if, uh, if you recognize this as a quadratic equation and you knew that you were looking for two answers, very, very good. Matter of fact, I'll give you a little happy face for uh, getting that correct. Okay, so let's talk about this equation right here. We want to uh, go ahead and describe this as an exponential equation, okay? An exponential equation. Now, let's talk about um, powers, okay? So if I have 2 to the third power, I say this as 2 to the third power. This is the base, but this little number up here is called the exponent, okay? This is the exponent. This bigger number down here is the base. So you can see... This little x, our unknown value, is in the exponent's location. So we're solving for the unknown value of the exponent here. Okay, so we're looking for 2 to some power is equal to 7. Right? This is a completely different situation. They look similar, completely different situa situation. And the way we approach solving this is completely different to the way we uh, solve exponential equations. But that's what this is right here. Now, I'm curious... And how do you uh, solve exponential equations, okay? What do you use? And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. It starts with an L, 
okay, and L. What do we use to solve exponential equations? And again, it starts with an L. So if you're like, oh yeah, I think it's this, well, put that in the comment section. See how you're competing with your fellow um, YouTubers watching this video. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into actually solving these two equations. They're not that difficult, but again, uh, completely different. So let's uh, focus over here first. We'll get to this in a second. So we have x squared is equal to seven. Again, this is a quadratic equation. It's very, very easy to solve quadratic equations when they're in this form. All I need to do is literally just take the square root of both sides of the equation. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of seven is, uh, we wanna put in that positive and negative seven. Okay, very, very important that you put in this positive and negative because uh, one solution, x, our first solution is gonna be a positive square root of seven, and our second solution is gonna be a negative square root of seven. So for example, let's just make sure, let's drive this point home a little bit more thoroughly here. X squared is equal to nine. Okay, so oh, that's a quadratic equation. Take the square root of both sides. So X is gonna be equal to positive and negative three because a positive three times a positive three is a positive nine. That's what I had right there. And negative three times a negative three is also a positive nine. So this is where this positive and negative business comes from. You always gotta put that in. When you're taking the square root of a positive real number like this, always put that positive and negative in. If you fail to do that, and you just said x is equal to seven, uh, your teacher would take off some points and then you would have this kind of expression. You'd be like, hmm, you'd probably be a little angry and you'd be like, what are you talking about? That's right. Well, no, you only gave me half of the answer. You gotta give me all of the answer. Okay, so quadratic equation, if you got that correct, you know, both the positive and negative as well, then that's excellent, okay? All right, now let's talk about this one over here. This is a little bit more involved. Uh, this type of equation you would study in your basic algebra one type course, maybe even pre-algebra, but this type of equation right here, an exponential equation, is something typically you'll start seeing like an algebra two, certainly like pre-calculus and whatnot. And I asked you, what do we use to solve exponential equations? And it started with an L. Well, you use logarithms, okay, logarithms. And that's what you use. If you got that right, outstanding. Now, I'm just gonna show you how to solve this uh, very quickly, but I would have to go into like a full, like multiple lessons to really teach you all about logarithms and, and a relationship between exponential functions. But very briefly, exponential functions, they're the inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function, and the inverse of a logarithmic function is an exponential function. So again, I have, a, I have multiple uh, other uh, videos on this in my, uh, uh, I believe it's in my Algebra 2 playlist on my YouTube channel, or Pre-Calculus playlist. Again, I teach this thoroughly in any one of my Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus courses. So if you're at uh, any one of those levels or college algebra, you can really learn this thoroughly if you want to get into uh, one of my, um, you know, enroll one of my full courses. But let's get into this now. So two to the X power is equal to seven. Let's just really quick dissect this. Here's the solution, but I want to take this a step further, okay? Two to the X uh, power is equal to seven. So how can we just try to guess the answer here? Okay, let me go down here, erase this. Because I want you to walk away with a basic appreciation of logarithms as well. So I'm like, okay, two to some power is seven. Well, let's just start putting numbers in here. Two to the first power is just two, right? Uh, two squared is, uh, what, two times two, that's gonna be four, okay? So two squared, that's four. So, well, I need two to some power is equal to seven. Well, two squared is equal to four, I gotta keep going. How about two cubed? Well, that means what? Two times two times two. So two times two times two is eight, okay? So now let's take a look at that. Two cubed is equal to eight but I want two to some power is equal to seven. Well, here, I went too big, okay? Uh, I want two to, some, this actually, let's write it this way. Two to the X is equal to seven. Two cubed is equal to eight. So I'm thinking, hmm, my answer has gotta be somewhere between two and three because uh, seven is greater than four, but 
it's less than eight. So it looks like it'll probably be closer to three. So if I was to guess what this power might be, it might be like a 2.7, something like that, right? So, but how do we find that precise exact value? Well, this is the power of logarithms, right? The logarithms are incredibly important. And back in the good old days, old school math, like for me, maybe back in the 80s, 70s, or whatnot, when you uh, learned this stuff, when you had like an Algebra 2 course, in the back of the um, book, they had actual tables, logarithm tables you would actually look, look up. That was kind of before there was a lot of calculators out there. There was calculators, but you know some students couldn't use them, and the books would have these tables. I'm pretty sure today it's pretty rare to see a logarithm or trigonometric values in tables. Yeah, they're still kind of out there, but not all that common. So you do need your calculators to solve this uh, problem. But anyways, that's the objective here. We're trying to find 2 to some power is equal to 7, and we already talked about this x is going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. But how do we solve this? Well, what we're going to do is take the log of both sides, L-O-G, common logarithm. Again, this is not going to be a full lesson on logarithms. I just want to show you the difference between these two, equation, two equations here. So what I can uh, do at this point is uh, use the property of logarithms to take this x and drop it down in front of this log, just like this. Okay, so this is a property. So that leaves me with x times log 2 is equal to log 7. Now, if you went into your calculator and just uh, hit that LOG button 2 and LOG 7, these are just going to be like decimal values. So if I want to solve for x, and that's what I'm trying to do here, I can just simply divide both sides of the equation by LOG 2, just like this, and I get this as my answer. So x is equal to LOG 2 divided by, L, uh, sorry, LOG 7 divided by LOG 2. And this would give me the exact um, answer to this formula, which again is going to be two points, something or the other. I haven't done those uh, calculations in here, but you know, just by guesstimating using kind of common sense, you can see uh, where its value is going to lie. All right, you shouldn't get something like x is equal to 9.5 or, or whatnot. But this is the value of logarithms. You got to learn how to use logarithms. And there's natural logarithms. There's different. Uh, there's a, this is a huge topic in mathematics right here. But you can't learn this stuff until you've mastered quadratic equations. But more importantly, I think the bigger uh, picture. By the way, too, if you let me just. Uh, I don't want to leave you hanging. If you got both of these problems right and you knew everything about this, then I must go ahead and give you an awesome happy face with a good old 1986 uh, flat top haircut, an A plus and a 100%. I'll give you a few extra stars just to make you feel a little extra special today. Nice job. Okay, that just shows me that one or two things are happening. Either you have a strong, great math teacher or maybe you've been watching a lot of my YouTube videos. Who knows? But uh, nice job. But the big uh, point, okay, in this video is when you're studying mathematics, okay, algebra, more advanced algebra, uh, algebra 2, college algebra, pre-calculus, you're going to see a lot of things that look similar but are completely different. And that's why when you're learning math, you can't learn it like halfway, okay, because as you accumulate more and more math skills and you're, you're challenged with more and more different complexities if you don't really really know something you're just going to be guessing and you know then it's just going to become too much you know you're basically going to implode with uh you know um you know being confused you're not going to know what you're doing so the way to learn math is to learn and master one skill at a time okay so hopefully you've mastered quadratic equations there's a lot to cover in this topic and then you moved on so eventually and two exponential and logarithmic equations. That's the way to learn math, one skill at a time. But uh, if this little video helps you out in some small way, then go ahead and please uh, consider helping me out by smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, please stick around or watch all the uh, videos I've made in the past. I have a ton of content there. I'm going to be making new stuff, you know, as time goes on. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.